Good morning, people. Tell you what, I've had a busy couple of days. Well, it's got a busy couple of weeks, to be honest. I've had an uh, awful lot of university deadlines to be meeting, so that's why there hasn't been a, a video up in a, a little while. But, uh, you know what? I'm, uh, I'd hate to disappoint the internet. I'm back. I'm, I'm doing more pyre. Um, just, just for you. Just for the, uh, what, four people who watch these videos. Yeah, you know who you are. This is for you. Yeah, you owe me. Yeah. And I, I know I'm doing an incredible service for mankind and everything by playing video games. But, I mean, I personally am not saying you should nominate me for the Nobel Prize. If you want to, I'm not going to stop you, but I'm not saying you should do that. I, I think that's that's a bit too much, all right? So d don't think I am. Anyway, we're going to play this game. We're going to do that. Um, I kind of forgot where we're up to. I think we've just... Yeah, we've reached the flagging hands. That's what we've done. It's gross and poisony. There's nothing in here. So let's consider how to proceed, shall we? Prepare for some voice acting. The flagging hands region proves as dismal as Joe Dariel indicated. The air is thick and foul. How far to the pit of Melith? All the way across the marshlands on the coast. Reader, would you join me in the wagon for a moment? We have matters to discuss. Joe Dariel and Hedwin exchange looks, and then she turns to you. Go see what he wants. Thank you for your time, Rito. I have something for you on behalf of my client. Before you is an artifact called the Beyond the Crustale. You observe a shimmering crystal of some sort beside the Book of Rites. As you have surmised, the triumvirates you have to confront during your right shall stop at nothing to prevail against you. They are prepared for this for quite some time. The Beyond the Crystal may help ensure that you are well prepared in turn. It is a resource now at your disposal to be used at your discretion. Gaze upon it and you shall see what I mean. Sorry, I'm, I'm making myself laugh with this ridiculous, ridiculous attempt at some sort of French accent. <laughs> Let's take a closer look. The Beyond the Crystal seeks a rookie. Wow, well, okay. I didn't realize it was sentient. You look upon the shimmering surface of the Beyonder Crystal. Some of your senses fail, though you retain a hold over your consciousness. An apparition appears before you, clad in the raiments... Still haven't looked up how to pronounce that word. It's only been like two weeks. <laughs> but incorporeal. Hmm. I think this one's a girl. We need more girl voices. I sense that you are not a total idiot. She reaches for the clasps on her mask. So, the Nightwings have returned. Oh, but where are my manners? You must be their lovely reader. Please, call me Sandra. We met briefly before, when you first beheld the book. When you were stuck inside of it. I was among the phantoms your companions banished there, no doubt stroking their egos. You listened well enough to the damned voice, now I suggest you listen well to me. I am bound in servitude to you, along with any idiots whose freedoms happen to be intertwined with yours. I know the rights better than anyone. I can soon whip you into shape, but if you take advantage of my services... First, I offer scribe trials to those friends of yours. If they can pass, it shall be worth their while. And yours. Secondly, my Beyonders and I avail ourselves for practice rites, should you be so inclined. Or you could always come and chat and briefly free me from my eternity of boredom. Hmm? 
I have invoked Sandra from the Beyond a Crystal. What exactly do I wish to do? Um, I actually in practice right to just what? Yeah, they're just they're just practice. We don't need practice. We're great. Uh, she may want to have a chat. Or well, there's this. See, I get a reward for that. Let's try it. Indeed. It looks as though one of those failures of yours is ready for a lesson in pain. Uh, not you. We'll just use... No, he's, he's, he's too group orientated. Let's, let's take Shay. Ray. Shay Ray. Ray Shay. Ray J. Um, how do we... Oh, she's ineligible. Oh, only Ruki can do it. I guess that's why she was seeking Ruki. Okay. You asked Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Ruki. What, the loudmouthed cur? Well, I suppose he is ready, technically, though I have a litany of reservations about him. But let's bring him forth. Soon, Ruki appears in heed of the summons. Um, chum, why are you looking at me like that? Why am I looking at you like that? I'm not attracted to dogs. That would be weird. Just because I live alone with two of them. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> right, okay. What we gotta do then? My pie is bigger. Alright, what's the big idea, huh? Is it some kind of trick you're playing, chum? The apparition Sandra then appears and unfastens her mask. Shut your snout and listen well, Kerr. You answer to me here. What? Huh? What? Your mouth runs quicker than those stubby little paws. You have much to learn if you have any intent to prevail in the rites. Let us see how you fare without the benefit of your trusted comrades. Save for your lovely reader. Uh, uh, I guess it's just you and me then, huh, chum? Wherever you are. Oh god. Okay. Eep. Get it. Oh shit. Well, this is not good. Hey, I got one. Oh shit, and then did that because I'm dumb. I can't. Oh, they've, there's walls. I didn't realize those runes were walls. Okay. Okay. This actually might make it easier if. Because they're big and they might not be able to get past the walls very often. Ah, shit. No, stop! Stop! Okay, this isn't going amazingly, I'll grant you. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, please stop. Right, okay. Okay, we're, we're, we're down now. Our advantage is gone. Can make it back, though, it's fine. Oh, okay, so I wasn't sure if you could throw through auras or not. I guess you can't. Hey, we did one. Oh, their, their touchdowns are worth more than mine. That's not fair. Please stop doing that. It's very mean. Now, how I managed to banish her then, but I'm not going to argue. Maybe Aurora was smaller from just having shot me. I, I don't know. Oh, kind of rocking a hard place here. 
Come on, respawn, 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 respawn. Yes! God damn it. If they do one more, I lose. Cannot have that. Yes! I need to do two more. Okay. Get it and go. Shit. Thank you, wall. Okay. That's it. You just crawl towards me. I'll be over here. Alright, one more. One more. Come on. Step it up. They're all alive, so this could be an issue. They're doing the damnedest to cock block me. But, we're in. <laughs> nice. Well done, Rookie. Yeah, egg salad, exactly. That is how we do it, right chum? It is, and you acknowledge likewise that you did not do it on your own. Despite having to face my demon friends all by yourself. You passed my test, Kerr. Congratulations are in order. Both to you and to your lovely reader. Now, farewell. What is life without an adversary? That's a very good question. Good question to ask, Book of Rights, and I'll tell you, my life has no adversaries because I tend to avoid people. So it's it's quite good. I get to just sit home and play video games all day. That Sandra kinda gives me the shakes, you know what I mean, chum? Hey, what's that you've got? You got the Jumois Fang. Which uh, is a special Rookie thingy. After Rookie casts his aura, it lasts longer than usual. Okay. Cool. I guess we'll equip it to him. Where are you, Rooks? There you go. Uh, there it is. Have a fang. I'm sure you'll appreciate it. Return so soon, reader. Not that I'm complaining. Uh, Sandra deems none of your fellow worthies... <laughs> none of your fellow worthies exile for her time right now. <laughs> Please check with Alert. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we could chat to her, I suppose. See what she has to say. I do appreciate the effort to make small talk with me, reader. Anything to break the monotony of staring at the void within this place. Not that I could see if I tried. <laughs> she laughs at this. Or maybe at herself. Because she's a crazy person. Certainly I could make talk with my fellow Beyonders trapped here as they are with me. You might expect that we would all keep each other company. There is just one problem there, however. We're all sick of each other. She laughs again, perhaps not at her joke, but instead at her predicament. That was a joke? Okay. I do exaggerate to some extent, but there is a certain truth in this. We have been stuck together long enough that we have grown more distant rather than more close. But I had best not wear up my welcome with the likes of you for as long for I have long since done with all the others here. So carry on for now, and if those fools with whom you travel learn something, come bring them forth to me, and I shall see that they learn some more. Okay, thanks, Anne. I'll be going now. Take care of yourself, Frida. Get the fuck out of here and continue our journey. You find everyone feeling rather miserable, and you sense that just being in the flagging hands eats away at one's spirit. Only the imp Tzo seems unaffected. Minus one hope. Aww. A moment, reader. 
There are several courses we may take through the flagging hands. If you choose to prolong your stay, it may be worth your while. However, your companion spirits shall likely suffer more. There are several. The north route crosses a mass grave. We can get a valuable item if we get grave digging there. Uh, in the middle, there's a there's a pit, and it's good. Hedwin suggests that this faster route will reduce your companion's loss of hope, which sounds good to me. While in the fallow field, there's a southern route, which we can use to improve a talisman. Hmm. Improving a talisman does sound useful. Or is this just a valuable item? And that could be anything. We'll lose the hope, we'll take the fallow field. The south route through the flagging hands is blocked by this pop up. Is bleakness and decay. No one speaks, yet you sense despair encroaching in the minds of your companions. Only Tzo seems unaffected. Later, you accompany the lone minstrel in pursuit of what you came to find. The bog dwellers, or flagging hands, are some of the only creatures that can stand it here, and even they, just barely. This particular region is the agricultural heart of the area, but you can see that there is little left to harvest. Perhaps, though, you can help them plant a stronger crop. A lone minstrel leads you to a sad little patch of mud. He leans down and speaks into the earth. Hello, bug dweller. I have brought you a reader. Please tell him what you'll need. Some sort of creature shambles forth. With broken hands, it points you to a collection of foul seeds and simple garden tools. It has worked familiar to you, and to your surprise, the soil is rich and fertile. Grains and other crops could grow. The planting job seems simple enough. It's almost a relief from all your travels. It is a moderate effort on your part, yet the bog dweller seems elated. As much can be said of such a creature, it insists on paying you for your assistance. You received a dash of stardust, heck yeah. Let's go. We're going. We're here. Yay! Look at this place, it's horrible. By the time you reach the pit of Melith, everyone besides the imp Tizo seems to be feeling even worse than before. You sense the desire to leave this place as soon as possible. Just like my desire to belch. There we go, I moved the microphone away from my face for that so you didn't get the full, the full force of it. It was most unpleasant. <sighs> Prepare for the right anyway, shall we? Even though we got like minus twelve hope at this point. Um, first let's have a chat. <laughs> Joe Dario's got something on her mind. You sense her steel gaze well before you turn to her. Rita, rummaging about the wagon once again. <laughs> Tell me something. Now that you're here, look at me. Are you afraid of me? You consider the question. You have never before met someone like her, but do you know something of what happens to those who remain in the downside for many years? Which is a vast purgatory. Oh yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, oh, I don't think you're, you're, you're bad, to be honest. You've been quite nice. You're one of the nicer ones, really. I think Rookie's a bit more off-putting. And Ray with her, you know, blatant insanity. Um, yeah, right. I quite like you, Joe Dario. You're useless in, in matches, but, you know, that's by the by. You tell her that although you do not yet know each other well, you do not fear her, and on the contrary feel safer in her presence. Truly. In that case, I have much work left to do. You shall fear me yet, if you survive this place. Now then, I shall go make my rounds. She walks away. Feel the flow of the wagon shake with her step. Hey, she gained hope. I guess I may end up having to use her anyway. Just so I have someone who respawns, you know, within a minute. 
The book's all shiny and shit. <laughs> Is this a new page? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, let's inspect it so I don't have to read the stupid font. It was not long before the Empire began to crumble. With my liege gone, his own country quickly turned upon itself. I must admit that this collapse had started long before the Emperor's disappearance. His decision to give chase after a myth but hasten the inevitable. All the while, the rope caller stood by, awaiting such a time as he could rule in my liege's stead. He would be our people's saviour. His first charge was to organize a search for the missing Solium Mur. Warriors, pathfinders, and scholars heard the call and prepared to seek him out. Okay, there's a story going on. It's. it's storying. Edwin has cooking tins, but he's busy scouting the area. Is anyone else doing anything? Rookie's looking around outside. Is that like a ship version of scouting the area? Tizo is scouting the grounds, which is like scouting the area, but only, you know, the, the bottom part of it. <laughs> Ray's just wandering about. She's not making any attempt to actually look at her surroundings. She's just staggering blindly. And uh, where's Joe Dario? There she is. But, but what am I? There we go. She's nearby. She's not even moving. She's just, just just standing there, being nearby. Oh, I like the wide range of activities on offer at the moment. Let's get out of here. Why do you have to sell me, Slug Market? Uh, this voice. Oh, hey you guys. You know, this place, a lot of folks, but not a lot of customers, know what I mean? So have a look around. Uh, what we got? We got uh, plus two presents. That's the size of the aura, I believe. That's quite good. Uh, this grants hope, which I might actually need right now. Uh, after banishing the adversary, the bear gains one dollar. While carrying the orb, the bear removes faster than usual. That's good. It's also 200 gold. When plunging into the adversary's pyre, extra damage here, and that's it, having extra health on the thing, and these oh, there's a, oh, there's a plus two. There's a plus two. Very nice. So we could buy the Faith Stone and upgrade it. That'll be 56. We could actually get two of those, if there's two of those for sale. We'll get this. We'll get that. Yeah, there's only one. Okay. Oh, I know you're going to love that stuff, guys. It's pretty. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you want some more, now I, I know just the individual and his dad who can get it. Catch my meaning, yeah? Just stop on by some other time. Well, for now, I'll just buy your shit stuff because you don't have any good stuff. I could get the lucrative contract, but I don't think I'd bother equipping it. I don't think I've got enough slots going. Although, actually, I don't think Dodario's got anything equipped. And I'll probably be taking it today. And she does banish people a lot. So, actually, we will take that. Right, thanks. That was actually quite useful. So, over to the roster. Okay, you're going to. Hang on. First, can we... Plus three, hope. Cool. That counteracts a lot, the loss, I suppose. There you go. You can take the lucrative contract. Didn't I have another thing? Oh, yeah. Tizo's got it. Hmm. Let's upgrade this. And again. In fact, no. We'll upgrade Tizo's thing. 
36%. Nice. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Must be our lucky day here. I don't know what, Dad. Question, is the big red demon or the slug his dad? Probably the big red demon. Either way, it's weird. Let's commence the right. As you make preparations for the coming right, you wonder if the stars above will be visible through the dense fog hanging over the pit of Malief. And then... Tizo does that. Pretty good jump scare, I think. He seems to be concerned by something in the vicinity. What's the something? I don't know, but he disappeared in a hurry. Oh, is, is Tizo alright? He was so frightened. He was not frightened. He was issuing a warning. Silence. Everyone, take cover. Jodario makes a quick note of several hiding places among the nearby crags and rotted husks. You wait. Something about the place dampens your senses. All you feel is a creeping dread. Then, from the shadows, a writhing shape slides forward, its hulking form draped in clothes. The shape stops. Slowly, its head turns from one of you to the next, each in turn. Okay. Wise of you to hide yourselves from us, little nightwings. You trespass on the resting place of the astral born. We shall see ye when the stars muster the courage to illuminate this place. The creature vanishes into the dark. After a time, your companions reconvene. That was a bug groan. Indeed. That was Witch Udmilde of the Withdrawn. Was it a girl? Oh well, the voice was a mistake, it's fine. Mmm. <laughs> Tizo makes clear that he has no love for Udmilde. Although the rights dictate she cannot harm you bodily. With her, best not to take any unnecessary chances. We'll take what chances we can. Uh, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> we'll take what chances we can get in all of this, everyone, it's time. There we go. <sighs> hey, you get enlightenment even if you fail, so that's, that's good, I guess. Why you made it, Rita? Made it all the way to the detestable pit of Malif. In doing so, of course, you have disturbed your ancient adversaries, the Withdrawn. The deranged witch who leads them has big plans in store, should she prevail in all this. Now, as you know, I normally would wish you a shameful defeat. But in this case, I wish you a little bit of luck. The Cronod Milder sees your companions gathered by their pyre. A little flame shall never warm ye. Such less survive the night. Here a zil slash 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 A monstrosity described in myths and ballads thought slain by the eight scribes Make the Nightwing suffer! <laughs> Ruki trots forward from your ranks Listen here you old bag you don't scare any of us one bit. You or your buddy Ils is 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 lack is lack. Is that what we're going for here? You or your buddy is lack. Now, we're doing this or what? The question hangs in the air for longer than is comfortable. It does seem to have drawn Odd Milday's attention, however. Uh. Ricky begins to squirm a bit. Then 
Odmude moves her slender fingers to her mask. Oh, nice. Foolish. His lack shall grow. His lack shall grow. His lack shall grow. He shall consume ye ere your little flame has died. That we shall ensure. When Modo slides off towards her followers, Ruki remains motionless for a time. Uh, uh, whoops. It's fine. The right shall begin forthwith. You have hope. Edwin. You have hope. Tizo. Goddamn seven. Jesus. <laughs> You've actually got pretty good hope. But to be honest, so does Ray, and she's good. So <laughs> Ray. Very well. But as the eight scribes once vanished Islak, so shall we prevail. No matter where you go, his lack will find ye and devour ye. Woohoo! Comments. Light and nerds. Oh, this way! The night wings <laughs> I didn't the think that was going in. So far, so good. I'll just go this way a bit. Oh god, the shot's like a shotgun. It's kind of weird. My flame has died a little. Okay. Well, bye then. <laughs> okay, these guys are a lot easier than the last one we did. Fucking cockney dogs. The live blood of Islak, it flows within this lair and beneath this world. His life blood, it shall engulf ye in such blackness and despair. Okay. It can do that. The witch invokes a profane name and shall repeat. Best beware of foul sorceries. Absolution! I'm very wary of foul sorceries. <laughs> the right is nearly ended. Why would I ever use anyone other than Ray and uh, Hedwin? They're just the best. The orb, take it. Oh, the scoop. Okay, let's dodge the goop. I guess that was a foul sorcery. Oh shit. I can fly, I can fly. Nice. Now we revive him and let him score because we're an idiot. <laughs> I completely lost track of where the ball was. God damn. Well, there should be one man down now at least. Oh, fuck you, goop. Oh, yeah, you can jump. Okay, I kind of have this coming because I'm just that bad at the game. So scary <laughs> oh wow! And it is done. Killed two with one shot. Very impressed with myself. The night wings once again prevail. Process. A perfectly agreeable performance overall. I thought so. The ceremony is complete. Nice work, everyone. Never thought I'd have to stand against a bog dweller. Tizo praises everyone's courage against Admiral Day and the withdrawn. Thanks, Teaser. The scribes, they vanquished his luck just as we prevailed tonight. His luck. I think I said it right because she just she just whispered it. His luck, we have failed thee, 
and the deed shall be repaid in blood. As for ye fools, ye shall be consumed, and everything around ye, from the soil to the stars, ye shall see. Boundless are the teachings of the scribes. Yay, boundless. I love boundless things. No one gonna level up? No. Okay, that's disappointing. Until the stars align. And when will that be exactly? Just as a frame of reference, you know. Having secured victory over the withdrawn in a pitch battle, you and the others have some moments to recover from the ordeal in the real... Not the reflective. <laughs> it's not that shiny. In the relative safety of the black wagon. So... so when can we get out of here? What, Greendale? Had enough of old Milday's hospitality for the time? Oh, Jody. Yeah, thanks. I'm good. The reader and the stars will point the way, as ever. It's just... So far, we kept going. North. Yeah, north. If that's the case again this time. A sea of solace spreads north and west from here, for untold leagues. I could not tell you when last a vessel dared to sail those waters. Tizo asserts himself during the conversation. What is the matter, little one? Tizo is trying to get you to come and look at something outside the wagon. Reader, please go see what he wants. You excuse yourself and follow the imp into the dark of night. It's a trap. You find Ray in the lone minstrel, already gazing up at the stars. Can you not read the stars yourself, then, Mr. Minstrel? I fear it is not so simple as matters of can and cannot when it comes to me, Ray. We shall see what the reader has to say, for this is his charge. And here he is, in fact. Thank you for fetching him, Tizo. You're welcome. Yeah, that's pretty much what he said. Reader, it would seem the skies have clear to some extent. Please look upon the stars and see what they compel us to do next. Reach for the stars. Um, well we're there. That's the one we're at. What's this? There's uh, Geminian, the Olden Star. Star of the First Empress, those born under it seek knowledge and new experiences. Very nice. Oh, okay. That's Dreamware, we we've been there. Is this... This was our path, right? So I guess we go here next. To Oris, the Azure Star. Which burns bright over the ruins of a lost frigate in the Sea of Solace. Yeah, we're going into the sea. Brilliant. We need a boat. Does the wagon also also work as a boat? I suppose it can fly, so it doesn't need to. The rights beckon you still further north, towards the middle of the Sea of Solus. That's not good. You're joking, right, chum? Does the reader seem like the joking type to you, Greentail? We cannot argue with the stars. You talk like you can just go ride right into the water. Pardon my interruption, though. Perhaps we can. Say what? My client, Sandalwood, here, has a way of anticipating such eventualities. West of here lies a place called Big Bertwoods. The proprietor is an old companion of his. She may be able to assist us when we turn Roshan again. Edwin's smile returns. That sounds like our best shot right now. 
Let's pack it up and move as soon as possible. Hey. <sighs> you again. I already g regret giving you the miscellaneous foreign voice, I'm gonna be honest. Greetings, reader. It is good that you are here, for there is something that I wish to tell you privately. Do you have a moment? It shall not keep you long, although I know your time is precious. Fine, I'll hear you out. Just be brief. You bid him to continue and make clear your interest in whatever he has to say. Very well, and thank you for your time. And I should further note matters that pertain directly to the rights. I must reveal to you alone, uh, for thus I am obliged. In any case, when you confronted the withdrawn and witch Uldmilde, you might recall she tended to invoke a certain name. Islak, the astral born, I hesitate to say it even now. You would be forgiven if you took the ravings of Uldmilde for mere nonsense. However, her words, as it turns out, ring with a certain truth. Before the union of the eight scribes, when first they found themselves here in the downside, the land was even less hospitable, if that can be believed. It was ruled over by greater titans, the one called Islach who is the eldest and most fearsome of the lot. Just the same, the scribes managed to defeat it. They later used Islak's own hide and echo to bind the Book of Rites. However, Islak did not truly die, for by some accounts it seems to be incapable of death. The creature is regenerating even now, though very, very slowly. Its vow is to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return onto whatever plane that banished it to ours. So, in a way, it is an exile just like you. If ever should the creature be reborn, it shall be many ages hence. Thus the ravings of Admilde are more or less inconsequential for the while. Yet the history of Islak is inexorably linked to the rites, and therefore must be known. I trust your research of the book shall lead you to discover more. In time. I hope all of this is some reassurance. And now I leave you to your more immediate concerns. I shall go check to see how everyone is faring at this time. He heads out into the evening, bidding you a good rest for the evening. Yeah, that was definitely reassuring, mate. You told me that some giant titan god is being reborn to destroy the world and kill everyone. That that That's really reassuring. I was quite happy to just write it off as the ravings of a mad woman. But no. I thought you forgotten your voice. What brings you to me this... No, why are you foreign too now? <laughs> what brings you to me at this time, my dear reader? No, not another one? Okay. I don't really care what's on your mind, to be honest. Until our next appointment. Okay, let's continue the journey. Is Big Bert true to skull? I mean, that's a very big skull, I'll grant you. This is the place. Let us go see my client's companion as soon as you are ready. Oh, it's not like I have a great deal many other options right now. Big Bertrude's a sickly gathering of. Come on, start again. Big Bertrude's is a sickly gathering of bog dwellers who stay within shadows, yet you can feel their eyes surveying everything. The lone minstrel steps forward. Sandalwood centers. The words are enough to make the bog dwellers snap to attention. They emerge from the mud and dark and begin inspecting your black wagon with their strange tools. One of the bog dwellers slivers forth. She is larger than the rest, and no doubt that she commands the others. 
Hmm. Thou speakest the name Sandalwood. We would know his whereabouts. Reveal them to us. Good day to you, Big Birdwood. <laughs> it is a pleasure to meet you at last, for Sandalwood always spoke highly of you and your handiwork. Mm, he did, did he? In turn, we know who thou must be. Yet thou speakest of the past. Sandalwood, doth he yet live? Speak plain, speak quickly. To be quite frank with you, madam, I do not know for certain. For I have been apart from him for some time, carrying out his will. Though I have every faith that I, Sandalwood, lives. As for his current whereabouts, I understand that he awaits us somewhere near Waking Wood, beyond the waters. We wish to seek him there, though as you can see our wagon is ill-suited for the task. One good Bertrude frowns at this, studying the lone minstrel all the while. No, indeed. Then leave us, return at dawn, that is all. Well, by your grace, big Bertrude. <laughs> Minstrel turns away, but Hedwin stops him. Don't stop him. Please don't stop him. Hold on. Are you sure about this? Leaving the wagon in their care? All should be in accordance with my client's plan. You keep calling Sandalwood your client. He must reward you well. I, in a manner of speaking, he helped me find a sense of purpose I thought lost. Edwin nods at this, and then turns to you. Well, my friend, I guess we'll see what happens, right? I'm off to let the others know. You find yourself with some time for your vacations while the bog dwellers go about their business. Sweet. I love having time for my vocations. I can't remember exactly what I got when foraging last time, but I think it was disappointing. Um... I'm not that into the the idea of that. I assume that's just like a a one match buff or whatever you get from doing that. Whereas this, I'm assuming, will grant XP to someone. So let's do that. Having gleaned knowledge from the Book of Rites, you can impart some of its teachings. As each exile's path towards enlightenment is personal, you'll have to mentor them one at a time. Alright, you're already level three. You're not going to reach level three. John, you will reach level 2, but I've kind of given up on you. You apparently won't gain anything from this. Huh, weird. Neither will you. Oh, so I can only actually... The only ones who will actually gain anything, by the looks of it, are... Uh, Jodariel or Ruki. That's unfortunate. I assume it's not, like... Some sort of UI bug or anything. We can only mentor the two lowest levels. Oh no, because Ray's got less XP than Joe Dario. That's weird. I guess we'll get Rookie to level two then. Just in case we get forced to use him at some point. Sure, chum. I could go for some enlightenment right about now. Might take the edge off. You illustrate to Ruki some of the intricacies of the rites, focusing on how all three in a triumvirate can move and act as if of one mind. You sense you grasp some of the concepts. Hey! See that, chums? Old Ruki Greentail's got some bite in him yet. Okay, let's see what you've got. Take a glory dive. Deals more damage when plunging. Cast his aura 50% further. And he banishes adversaries by casting his aura. The blast can banish nearby adversaries. Oh, it like makes them explode or something when you hit them. That's interesting. 
After plunging into uh, uh, the adversary's pyre, Ruki soon returns faster than remaining banished. What? Rather than remaining banished. Oh, okay. Okay. Ruki can jump a second time while airborne. When sprinting, Ruki accelerates faster than usual to go an even faster top speed. After he's banished by an adversary, Ruki has a 50% chance to return in only one second. Ruki can jump a second or third time while well, I I don't know, I don't jump a lot, so I feel like the jump spec's probably not for me. We'll go with the other one. Whew. Woo, I've got to hand it to you, chum. That book's not quite as boring as I thought. I better go lie down. Okay, let's continue the journey. The lone minstrel finds you early the next day. Vida, it is ready. Please come have a look. Ethers are already there. Cool. We got a bell. Black Wagon appears different now than it did even a day before. The hull is fully sealed and reinforced, aside from the, you know, the door. <laughs> and all manner of nautical equipment adorns the port side. I. Wow. You people seeing this? I'm gonna have a look around. The wagon should be fit for a sea voyage. Let us depart at your earliest convenience. What about Big Bertrude? And then she appears, as if on cue. Tell that sandalwood he owes us twice over. If I may, Big Bertrude. You could tell him yourself if you wish to accompany us in our voyage north. Our group would welcome the support of someone with your vast experience. Dare they make flirtations upon us? No, I, uh... Enough! But should you see that sandalwood, tell him also to come visit us again. Now, be gone from here and tell no one we were paid in favours. She slithers off without another word. Soon the lone minstrel breaks the silence. We are fortunate that she assisted us, but we should go, just as she said. I know the navigational controls and shall explain. This is so exciting! I don't know how to swim. Tizo seems to share Ray's enthusiasm for heading out to sea. He doesn't need to know how to swim because he can fly, so it's okay. I'm beginning to feel ill already. Black Wagon became seaworthy. Woo! Let's go! Yeah, let's just leap off that cliff. That sounds like a brilliant idea. Huzzah! The end is night. Oh, oh, okay, it just straight up turned into a boat. I wasn't expecting that, I thought it was just going to be a floating wagon. Yeah, this is a gulf. You and your companions watch the sea as your wagon rolls over the gentle waves. We have crossed into the warm gulf. I hope that all of you are acclimating well. The warm gulf is a tempestuous sea of Oh, the tempestuous sea of solace lies beyond the death still body of water. So this is like a an inlet or something. Okay. There is no acclimating to these worm infested waters. We risk everything to sail here. It's a worm. It's an exiled worm of the sea dominion tend to seek out the cold of the downsides. Okay, that doesn't really tell us much. Is it like a worm is in a dragon or a worm is in a big worm. As long as we follow the cold current Big Bertrude indicated, we shall be quite safe. I don't know why I added quite into that sentence. If the next ride is in the middle of the sea, how will our adversaries meet us there? Well, they'll have a boat too, you idiot. I'm not the only ones in the world with a boat, surely. They shall find their way, as we found ours. It is all part of the scribe's design. 
Now, reader, please confirm the next point of our sea journey. We seek the Hulk of Oars. Which is... We don't know anything about, it's just a place we're looking for. Okay. Um, well, there's Outer Solus. Or there's Outer Solus. Our options are relatively limited at this point, I believe. I think I'll go with Outer Solus. You don't need to jump while you're in the water. That's just going to cause splashing. No one likes splashing. Yay. The wagon continue, continues rolling gently across the waves. Which seems to you to welcome... What the hell is wrong with me right now? It's a... Uh, put this stroke to one side and start again. The wagon continues rolling gently across the waves, which seems to you a welcome change of pace after having come from the flagging hands not so very long ago. However, Joe Dario seems more concerned now than before and paces ceaselessly. When she notices Ruki, she stops him for some questioning. Greentail, how is he doing? Who, Hedwin? Oh, he's, he's pretty much the same. Been up all night, retching into the waters if I had to guess. His first time out to sea? His first. She turns to you. Rita, please check on Hedwin when you have the opportunity. He requires our support and we require his swift recovery. You wish them a good afternoon as you go check up on the others in the group. Later you find Hedwin looking out of sorts. Oh. Hello, my friend. It's just, uh, this, the sea hasn't been good for me, I guess. It's funny. All this trouble, just to get back to the Commonwealth, of all places. Hey. <coughs> Losing air. Too deep for me. Hey, tell me something. What do you miss the most about that place? Um... I miss books. I like books. You tell them that you miss your book collection most of all because you're a reader and that's what you're into. After having taken many pains and risks to put it together. <laughs> ha, figured as much. I bet they burned all of your books, didn't they? Those scum. Anyway, I... I'll be fine, I think. Thank you for checking up on me. You sense he wishes to be alone. There is not much more to be done for him now. It appears he's too ill to conduct the next rite. God damn. So what's it going to be? Ray, Tizo, and... One of the other two, I guess. I'm sorry for my interruption, reader. Please, again, confirm the next point of our voyage. Oh, well, yeah, we're... We're going to the Sea of Solus. I think we all knew that. I need to check up with me every five minutes. Christ. Oh, we're still, like, landlocked. This is alright. By the scribes! The sea! I didn't know it was so beautiful. Having escaped the waters of Worm Gulf, you can see what must be the Hulk of Oars far on the horizon. Can I? Is it these? Not everyone has taken well to the sea voyage, however. Tito is wondering if Hedwin is feeling better. He requires further rest, Tizo. All we can do is wish him a swift recovery. Rita, sir. From this point our voyage must diverge from Bertrude's instructions. Please. Consult with your companions about which course to take. Oh, there's the Hulk of Oz. We're getting there. Take the Underking Pass. Uh, where we'll get blessed by the eight scribes, according to Ray. Or we can take the Fathomless Trench. Where Chizo wants to fish for something tasty. I like the idea of that. Let's get some fish. We don't need the blessing of the gods when we have fish. Certain the boat just took on an awful lot of water just then, but I'm sure it's fine. 
The sea is peaceful for the most part, save for the occasional strange shimmers beneath the surface. You realise the lone minstrel is looking down at them along with you. Those shapes down there. Some must be worms of the sea dominion. Cast into exile. Are my opponents going to be worms? Is that what's going to happen here? I understand that they tirelessly fought the Commonwealth's wars, having grown weary of their own. They must make worthy adversaries. <laughs> I love Tizo. Tizo appears to have spotted something tasty. Brilliant. Tizo dives in without warning into the depths below. And there he goes again. That one enjoys being at sea, despite its perils. Eventually, the little imp resurfaces, clutching something in his claws. He has claws? I suppose he has, like, little feet things. I assume he'd use his mouth for carrying purposes. Got a lesser shambler. Oh, it's, it's worth $90. Nice. I'll trade that in. Awesome. I was a bit disappointed at first, but I didn't realise it could actually get me some serious mo moolah. Moolah and money and cash and shit. This is the place, is it? The Hulk of Oars. As I arrive, after journeying across the sea, it seems the next rite is to commence here soon. Although there is no sign of your next adversaries as yet. Slug market's here though, because of course it is. What's this? Oh, you just keep on ringing that bell, chum. Keep at it. Ruki seems to be taking issue with your frivolous nature of the nautical bell. After all, there is no sign of a nautical emergency, nor a prepared meal. Oh, I know it's all, it's not meal time. It's fine. I'm starting to really enjoy the constant ringing sound, though. Now that it doesn't mean anything to me or anyone anymore. Besides, ringing that bell, it's probably some pretty good exercise, right? And it's good training for my ears, too. You know, because I've ultra-sensitive hearing, don't you? Well, not any more, I don't. Anyway, thanks. I mean that. He storms off. Ricky shall never forgive you for abusing the nautical bell. <laughs> so be it. <laughs> Ricky reappears laughing heartily. He was only joking. Probably. Okay, stop it, chum. I'm I'm not kidding. It's it's bugging me. Please. Okay then. Reader, a moment of your time. You asked what's on her mind. Tom Dearman. You just suddenly got really close. <laughs> Edwin, he is beginning to recover from his illness. However, its sudden onset serves as a reminder, I believe. I've known Edwin since he was a child. Even now, I hesitate to say that he has grown. Nevertheless, there are such things that even I would never say to him directly. For instance, I struggle with his confidence at times. Whether he leads us to our freedom or to our doom, I am ambivalent. Speak not a word of this to him, of course, in case that is unclear. I shall tell him in my own way, if and when the time requires. In any case, when times remind me of his mortal weakness, I end up having to consider what would happen should we become separated permanently. She trails off for a while. What I mean to say is... You should know that I am fully pledged now to this quest of ours, whether Hedwin is the one to lead us to its end or not. I have my reasons. One of them is him. I expect the same holds true for you. 
That is all I wish to say. Take care, Rita. She nods and brushes past you towards the door. Are they like an item? She's certainly into him, I can tell that much. I'm not sure whether he likes them that thick or not, though. There's nothing here. Why was it glittering? What's this? Oh, it's our fish. Hello, fishy. Why is that worth 90 gold? Oh, Book of Rights has got something for me. <coughs> the Emperor Solim Mern knew naught of this, of course. His expedition yielded not the treasure he desired, but brought him closer to the country than he had ever been before. As he travelled down the river Sclorian, that's a mouthful, in pursuit of greed, he found nothing but an inkling of shame. He saw the sunken faces of his people, heard their words for him. In time, he could not ignore it, and it proved more than he could bear. The river finally claimed him, his belongings and his retinue. Once the people heard, I understand they cried with joy. Perhaps he ought to have perished. But the mercy shown to him, I think, is what transformed him. Oh, I put the wrong inflection on that. Perhaps he ought to have perished. He didn't actually perish. That's what we're getting at here. This is still chapter one. This, this game's going to be long, I feel. I'm used to Supergiant games being over in about six to eight hours. This one has a lot of chapters. This Let's Play might go on a while. I'm okay with this. And I have no viewers, so, you know, I don't really have to take their feelings into consideration. I'm just making a point. This is going to be a long Let's Play. Okay. Uh, oh. You can click these as well. Doesn't make quite as annoying a noise, but... Not the Beyonder Crystal. Hmm. I keep forgetting her voice. It's like whispery. You have returned. How can I help you, if at all? Well, you can't because you keep refusing to give me scribe trials. So, do you think the orb's going to be shiny and stuff when it's uh, when she's got a trial for me? Or I, I don't know. I don't know what I should be looking for. Uh, let's go to the market. Oh, hey, you guys. Funny running into you out here, right in the middle of the drink, know what I mean? Not a lot of customers today, so have a look. I'll give you a good deal. Hey, new stuff. Uh, you wanna buy fish? Yeah. Yeah, you love that fish. Okay, we've got a pinch of stardust. Which costs six this time, when he only charged me four for it last time. He's trying to swindle me. What have we got here? Thorn not. When aura casting raises the bearer's maximum range by 8%, that's quite good, but I'm not sure I'd ever need to shoot that far. A scribe rock grants the bearer two presents. I might just save. I mean, I buy this. I'm not that interested in any of these, to be honest. So, I'll be seeing you guys. Uh, in here? Not you. We can't use old Heady this time because he's unwell. We can keep upgrading Tizo's crest though, I think. Um, if we can work out how. Ha, like that. 39%. Excellent. Oh! Dokey then. Um, this is probably a good stopping point. It auto saved, and we're about to commence a right, which means we've got some good action for the start of the next video. So yeah, I'm gonna stop here. I'll see you people for the next one whenever I have time to do it. I would say it'll be in a couple of days, but it might be a bit longer depending on how much work I have to do. <sighs> Either way, bye for now.